Greetings, members one and all of the Salivation Nation. What is a silver bug? Well, the answer to that question will not be answered in this article from equities.com. Let's find out why. Yes, indeed. This is a, a story, a little opinion piece, but quite interesting and fascinating. It sparks the idea of discussion on silver, and uh, we're going to kind of loosely define silver bug. And maybe you can put your thoughts in there below because this article does not answer the question. However, I do want to thank Chuck and Plata for sending it along to me. And by the way, thanks to several others of you who have sent me articles in the past. It certainly does help. Um, sometimes it's duplicative, but I certainly appreciate those uh, who send insights to me uh, via email, salivatemental at gmail.com. So let's take a look at this thing here. Uh, very fascinating indeed. What is a silver bug? And as you can see, there's a picture of a gorilla here. We'll find out a little bit. That'll make sense in a moment here. It's not just any kind of gorilla. But in 1973, a plane loaded with 35 million ounces of silver flew to Switzerland. The investment was initially designed as a hedge against inflation, which uh, was becoming rampant in the United States. The gold standard had just been lifted, that was in 1971, and the value of the U.S. dollar was plummeting. During the early 1970s, buying gold was forbidden, so silver was the best alternative. That's right. And three brothers took advantage. And by the way, it was in 1973 uh, when the Petro dollar was created, and that was Henry Kissinger's doing. So in a sense, Henry Kissinger essentially was the one that kept us from kissing the dollar goodbye. In 1974, William Lamar and Nelson Hunt acquired futures contracts for an additional 55 million ounces, just under 10% of global production. And by 1979, according to the New York Times, the Hunts owned between 150 and 180 million ounces of physical and paper silver. As such, they were the largest private silver holders in the world. The hunch drove prices up so rapidly, even jewelry companies like Tiffany's took notice. They ended up taking out a full-page ad in the New York Times to draw attention to the matter. Let's take a look at that. It's not any bigger than what's on the screen there. <laughs> we think it's unconscionable for anyone to hoard several billion, yes, billion dollars worth of silver and thus drive the price up so high that others must pay artificially high prices for articles made of silver. From baby spoons to tea sets, as well as photographic film and other products, says Tiffany in this ad. Fascinating indeed. I've never seen that before. That's pretty cool. By January 1980, the Hunt brothers controlled 69% of the paper silver market on the U.S. Comex. They were massively leveraged and used both the physical silver and other stock positions as collateral. In March of that year, the Chicago Board of Trade changed the rules of the game. The CBOT suspected the creation of, uh, suspended the creation of any new silver contracts. At the same time, COMEX cracked down and capped the position size at 3 million contracts. The combined effect was quick and drastic on the hunts. The margin calls began on the Hunt's paper holdings, and their power play ended. The Hunt's fortunes came crashing back down to earth on Silver Thursday in March of 1980. The end result was a spectacular crash on the markets, where silver fell over 30% in days. And this is why we'll never see anything like this ever again, uh, because of what's going on there. And the markets have become much more complex, I think, since then. So now it comes to the question of what is a silver bug? Sort of a, a switch. This, this little uh, um, introduction here is somewhat of a disconnect. But it says here, silver bug, an older male gorilla, usually the leader of a troop, whose hairs along the back turn gray with age. Uh, okay, that's the definition of a silver back, not silver bug. 
And we have a member of the community called Silverback Stacker. Yes, indeed. So I think this was the opportunity. Maybe there was a collusion between Silverback Stacker and the author of this article, knowing that I would pick this up so I could shout out Silverback Stacker. Well, no collusion is needing. I'm gladly to shout out Silverback Stacker. And uh, but the author says if he if he deletes Gorilla, I think that's a fair assessment of Silverbug. Um, and then he goes on to say, I like the Silverbugs. Their optimism and conspiracy theories are always entertaining. So that's sort of a dig on the silver bugs. But, you know, I look at a silver bug, and I'm going to kind of define it my own way. Um, because I don't necessarily think that we need to impugn motives to a silver bug. I think a silver bug is anybody who is just excited about silver and uh, enjoys it. Uh, they can be realistic. They can have realistic viewpoints on silver. They don't have to subscribe to any particular theories uh, per se. Uh, to enjoy silver and to accumulate it and to stack it. And you know, by the way, too, I think that is what makes a silver bug a silver bug. They're optimistic about silver in the future, but they also enjoy the metal. Because um, I believe some people may stack it, maybe even in the physical, where they're just accumulating tubes of silver eagles or even monster boxes or generic bars and putting it away, never to look at it, never to enjoy it. But in my mind, a silver bug is something more than that. Silverbug, I believe, is somebody who enjoys the metal, who not only is a stacker, but maybe even a collector as well, and enjoys holding the metal, enjoys different forms that it can take, uh, whether it be from poured silver to silver bars of various different styles and ranges, from vintage to um, modern uh, iterations thereof, um, or coin collectors. Uh, that specify silver in their coins. The reflectivity of the metal, quite fascinating indeed. And those people have a, an acute, I believe, understanding of the intrinsic value um, and the spot price and the amount value and the collector value that certain pieces of silver uh, may entail and the variety therein. Um, these days, the author goes on to say, silver bugs have every reason to shout from the rooftop. Even with spot silver trading mostly range bound, many silver stocks are at or near levels not seen in three years. So here we can see the primary silver producer returns. So their return is, you know, they're looking at their different returns. Fresneo mine is, is negative. Uh, and then the physical, I guess this is the physical, let's see if we can do the enlarge. Their enlarged version of this thing doesn't actually enlarge, it just puts it into a new window, its own window, but it's the same size graphic, that's kind of hilarious. So anyways, the um, the, the Cat USA Katusa Silver Producer Index is up over 200 and some odd percent. Uh, the physical markets are above, I guess, zero uh, there, um, and the Fresneo is negative. Volume is picking up, momentum is picking up, and the top silver companies have performed very well in 2019. So what can we expect if this is just the early innings of a massive silver run? Uh, silver is mighty booms and busts. We can see it below is a chart which shows the epic booms and busts in silver over the decades. We have Silver Tuesday. We saw that very small, I mean, it's a very large spike Uh in 1980 because of what the Hunt brothers had been doing, but we saw that even the effects of what they're doing had its way through the mid to late 70s going up. Um, but then it crashed down. It crashed down, but it never got back to its times before 1973 here. So in 1973 it was here. Um, when it crashed, um, essentially... Though it fell 90%, it was still up above what it was before the manipulation happened. And then throughout the 80s and 90s, it literally was double what it was, maybe even triple. Well, not quite triple, but it was more than double what it was uh, a decade earlier. Um, and uh, moving, it never really got down back down to those levels seen beforehand. And the same thing here. You know, we saw this one little spike in 2011 where it got to um, almost $50 an ounce and then it crashed back down 70%. But that 70% drop was still much higher than it was 
before the financial crisis of 2007-2008. So silver had a second spectacular rise before and during the global financial crisis. From 2000 to 2010, the price of silver climbed over 900%, well surpassing gold's performance of 600% over the same time frame. And so that just goes to show you that silver is more volatile um, overall. So if you have positions in silver, you can really come out ahead um, or you can really take a pretty big hit as well, depending on the fluctuations of the price. However, it should be noted that I call these floors. In other words, the bottoms, this bottom here where it was, is much lower than it was here. And this dry run here of silver mainly pretty much staying and then along this range of between five, six dollars an ounce. Well, we've not seen that again. So you have from the early 60s, um, you know, you've got this thing running about, you know, dollar some odd per ounce. And then it goes up to a higher floor, higher floor. I think if we see another big spike and it comes back down, we're going to see a yet even higher floor uh, if that does occur. So, then it, we talked about this in a previous video, but we'll kind of uh, uh, go through it again here. How big is the silver market? Many investors may be unaware, but the silver market is quite small. In the actual market itself, meaning the, the number of dollars that are in the market. We talked about that in a prior video, and I've discussed this. Last year, 840 million ounces of silver were produced worldwide, using a silver price of $16 per ounce. This makes it a $13 billion dollar a year industry. For comparison, last year 108, 108 million ounces of gold were produced. At a gold price of $1,400 per ounce, that represents $156 billion worth of value. That's 11 times the size of the silver market. To truly show a commodity comparison, we can make things visual. Below is a chart showing the annual market value of mainstream commodities. No, we're not going to click the large because we know it's not going to be enlarged. It could be the same size. It's just going to black out the rest of the screen. So we can look at the market size by commodity. We can see that iron ore has the largest market uh, of the comparison of these particular ones here. Gold is the second highest. Um, and copper is the third highest. And uranium is bigger. Nickel it's even less, and silver is the is the cheapest here. Um, and why is that? Well, um, I believe because copper is so widely uh, dispersed, and there's so much of it out there, and is being utilized um, mainly as a commodity. But keep in mind, folks, a little side note: copper is money. That's right, copper is money. It's it's just as much. It's just as much so, if not more so, than silver and gold. Um, and uh, no, that's going to be somewhat controversial, but it, it, it really is. In fact, it's being used today as money in coins around the world, for sure. But anyways, but that's a, that's a little digression there. And gold is hoarded, it's treasured. So, of course, it's, um, uh, it's going to be, and silver is relatively ignored um, in that case. It's really suppressed in that in that regard. But it is somewhat surprising because of the low price and its utilization in technology, um, we could see that go up a bit. The author has always liked silver and silver miners have made big scores on several occasions. One of the author's first big scores for himself and his subscribers was in 2006. He was doing due diligence down in Mexico and the first to go down an old mine shaft. The ladder broke and he fell down the base of the shaft. Unfortunately, the base was covered in bat dung. Ooh, that is crappy. I covered my face instantly with my shirt, knowing that I just fell into uh, to, and I'm lucky to be alive. I ended up spending five days in the ICU, but that cave led to a mega silver deposit and a tin bagger win and one of the first large financings that the author had led. Interesting, okay. So these days, it's getting harder and harder to find good silver deals. They just aren't there uh, that many legitimate new projects. This has to be a scary thing for a company like Fresneo, the world's largest silver producer. Um, below is a chart of Fresneo's uh, average head grade. If you're not a mining engineer, 
the head grain is the average grade of ore that goes through the milling operation. The higher the grade, the higher the, qual uh, the quantity of metal available to be processed. And so you can see the average production head grain has um, uh, gone down. But in uh, over the last year, since 2018, it has gone up and it started to go back up a bit. No, we're not going to enlarge because it doesn't do anything to enlarge the screen. So the average head grade has fallen by 50% since 2010. It's not a good situation for a miner. In a world where input and production costs are rising, yet profit per ton of rock has fallen by 50%, this poses serious long-term potential problems. The key to solving this issue is new high-grade production. The problem is, is finding world-class deposits is becoming harder and harder. That makes new discoveries that much more valuable. I think I did post a video a while ago about news of a new deposit here. Um, uh, that, that There's some potential sites where they found new deposits for primary silver miners. You know, again, keep in mind that silver is most of the silver's production comes as a byproduct of other metals like nickel, lead, mercury, and the like. So they've got the um, 2019 uh, has it's, it's up a bit. So maybe there's some of this has been discovered. They found a way. We'll see. The best silver stocks producer performance in 2019, which is important because this goes to show you how some of this is being mined and pulled out of the ground, and showing that these companies are doing well. The, por the performance of a watch list of silver miners that are that are on the author's radar. So Silver Corp, look at that. They're the biggest, um, uh, uh, the largest number here, 146, First Majestic, and Pan American Silver, Hecla Mining. And then we see other companies not doing so well. Fresneo is one of them. Great Panther is, is even worse there. So the database of silver miners doesn't stop at, at just the producers. He knows all the best development and exploration silver plays out there. We literally just closed our silver position at the KRO portfolio for over 70% gain in less than a year. It wasn't some illiquid junior. It was one of the largest producers of silver in the world. We used my alligator approach to be patient until it was right and it worked out well. 70% gain in under a year on a very liquid stock as a great score. In 2019, we saw a run-up of silver and gold stocks. In this month, issues of Katusa's uh, resource opportunities, we just locked in a quick 70% gain in one of the world's best-run companies. In fact, every one of our gold and silver picks this past year has had a double-digit or triple-digit win. 2019 was a lift-off year for the precious metal sector. And if this was truly an early innings of a massive gold and silver bull market, then you want to ensure that you have the core positions and the best run leverage companies of both silver and gold. And so then it goes on to kind of a sales pitch on the um, on the comp companies here. And uh, and I think it's somewhat important to know what's going on with the um, silver mining companies out there and gold mining companies to get an idea of kind of where uh, the precious metal could be going as part of the analysis. Things to consider... Uh, for those of us who strictly are in the physical um, and or dabble in the ETF world um, and futures markets, um, it is interesting. I would never myself. I'm not a speculator. If you're gonna if you're gonna invest in a in a silver mining company, uh, a stock in a silver mining company, you might as well just play the markets completely. You might as well just go into the uh, into the um, in the stock market, Dow Jones, or what have you, because these are companies like any other company. Um, and there's a myriad of different reasons why they may fail or succeed. You know, Fresneo is not doing so well. Silver Corp is. Why is that? Um, the author thinks there's a bull run here. So there's other factors that kind of can come into play here. But it is uh, very interesting to see uh, what's going on in, these, in this world and to kind of understand silver in general, as we discuss, you know, what is a silver bug? What makes a silver bug uh, different than just uh, your average Joe out there, average investor? So very fascinating indeed. Post your thoughts below. Be curious to see what you think. And remember, I do post videos on a daily basis. Um, if you don't see a notification, if you don't see the video in your subscription feed, more than likely something's gone wonky with YouTube's algorithm. 
So you can always go back to the channel page, the Salivant Metal channel page, and see the video there um, on a daily basis. So I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all and encourage you to please rate. And yes, I'm not just saying share as part of the end of the tagline. It really does help if you guys can find a way to share this uh, through other means. Um, comment and subscribe.